and Charleston counties. Well, those warnings remain until 615. And this same pattern 24 hours ago brought damaging winds and storms. Taking a look at the damage in Camden County now, massive trees knocked down and tree limbs scattered throughout neighbors' yards in Kingsland today. The Weather Authority's Blake Matthews joins us now with these severe thunderstorm warnings. Blake, are these storms as strong as yesterday? They are not as strong as yesterday, but still packing quite a punch. Let's get right to it. You can see a lot of lightning here stretching from southeastern Georgia down right into the heart of Jacksonville. A severe thunderstorm warning is in effect, again, for Duval, Nassau, Charlton, and Camden counties until 615. Zooming right on down, you can see a very intense line of thunderstorms stretching from St. Mary's just over the state line down I-95 right over JIA. Wouldn't be surprised if they're seeing ground stops there right just to the west of downtown and stretching just to the west of Orange Park. These showers are moving on off towards the east at about 35 miles per hour. Fernandina Beach at 557. That means you guys are already in it. Orange Park at 603. Little Talbot Island at 610. Jacksonville Beach 622. Ponte Vedra at 628. Nocatee 636. And Hilden at 644. Again, a very intense line of storms continuing. Now, looking at some of the winds. Yesterday, we had rain. Radar indicated winds of 80 to 90 miles an hour across portions of southeastern Georgia in Camden County. Clearly, we are not seeing that with these storms, 49, 46, but still quite gusty out there and still enough to knock over some trees, so be careful. Up in southeastern Georgia this hour, Brunswick, you guys, the worst is just off to your east. Just some light to moderate rain across southeastern Georgia, but we continue to track some very heavy thunderstorms just to the east or just rolling through Gainesville now. Keystone Heights at 558, Kingsland. 603, Johnson 616, Interlock in 623, Penny Farms at 625, and Botswick at 646, Palatka at 649. Again, these storms racing on off towards the east at about 35 miles an hour. Gainesville, you guys are going to be in it for about the next 20 minutes. Let's go outside really quickly, take a look at Tower Cam. You can see the dark skies over the sky there, over the skyline. And these storms will continue to move right through the downtown area any moment now. Uh, 60 mile an hour winds are certainly possible with these storms as well as some small hail and uh, very frequent lightning along with some blinding rainfall. Again, you can see the dark clouds there uh, forming over downtown Jacksonville. And again, we are looking for all these storms, including those of us in uh, Julington Creek, Orange Park, and those of us on the west side of Jacksonville. You guys are already in it. If you live on the south side of Jacksonville, including the town center, out along Phillips Highway, I-95 South along 295 East, out towards the beaches, these storms are yours as well. So go ahead and bring the party indoors. You're running out of time, and the heavy rain will be setting in momentarily. Another full update coming up in just a few minutes. Ashley? Residents in Candom County are back out today cleaning up a trail of destruction from yesterday's severe storms. They really saw the brunt of the storm, damaging winds with speeds up to 90 miles per hour. Knocked down trees and power lines. Take a look at this massive tree uprooted in Kingsland. We spoke with a few neighbors today, all cleaning up the damage. One man who wasn't home when the severe storms rolled through says he feared for the worst. My wife sent me a text and said, hey, there's a tree on top of our house. And I'm thinking the worst. I'm thinking one of the, the bigger trees that's right here. And uh, I got home, and, and the, the tree that belongs to my neighbor um, was laying on top of our house. Luckily, the, the little one right there caught most of the brunt of it, so uh, there was no damage done to the house. Well, Grande says that his neighbors were fortunate as well. The trees missed their homes instead of falling on the ground. Thankful there were no loss of lives. We continue to follow that breaking news alert on the city's west side where police have confirmed an officer-involved shooting. Police say the suspect is dead and the officer was not harmed. They've also confirmed that same property was operating as an active meth lab on Old Plank Road. Channel 4's Ashley Harding was briefed by police just minutes ago. She's joining us by phone. Ashley, what have you learned? Well, Ethan, first of all, I need to clarify that Chief, Chief Tom Hackney just told us in the news briefing, despite what was originally thought and reported by officers here at the scene, this was not an active math le meth lab, but that is something we are still waiting to learn more about because there will be a follow-up news conference tomorrow at 1 o'clock. But again, this happened around 11.50 this morning, just before noon, at this home on Old Plank Road. And Chief Tom Hackney says this began as a domestic violence situation involving a husband and his wife. That dispute had been going on, but thankfully the wife was able to escape, so she ran to the church just down the street. That church is called the West Shores Baptist Church, and that's where services were wrapping up. Chief Agnes says police units arrived, including canines and the SWAT team. 
and one canine officer was in the back of that trailer where that man was and others were in the front. Uh, sh shots could be heard coming from inside that home. Now, they're not yet identifying the suspect, but at one point they say he raised his firearm and fired it at one of the officers hitting an area just above his head. And then one of the other officers in front then fired, hitting the suspect once in the torso, and we're told he died at the scene. But today we did speak with the pastor of the church who consoled the wife when she came running in, trying to get away from her husband. Now, he told us that woman said the man had threatened to kill her. Let's listen more to what that pastor had to say. Nobody target practices over there all the time, all the time. You hear pistols and and uh, other uh, armament over there, so I don't know. Uh, the fellas never, never been very stable, as far as I know, from other people that know him. We have a friend who is a cousin to him, and he says, I hate to put it this way, but he says the boy just no good. That's, I'm just repeating what he said. Now, once again, Chief Hackney did say, despite those earlier reports, there was nothing, really nothing to indicate that an, ex, that an active meth lab was there involved in this. But again, they are still in the process of trying to identify this man. He, again, he plans to have a follow-up news conference tomorrow at 1 o'clock, that's tomorrow afternoon. And as is the case with officer-involved shootings, there are two uh, investigations that then go on. JSO investigates investigate their part of it, as does the state attorney's office. So for now, uh, we are reporting live here on the west side. I'm Ashley Varding, Channel 4, the local station. Covering Clay County, the search is on for a man accused of shooting and killing a woman in Green Cove Springs this morning. Investigators believe that 25-year-old Victor Kruger Jr. shot 55-year-old Ernstine Hines around 4 a.m. Hines was rushed to the hospital where she died. Police say that after the shooting, the suspect took off running through a wooded area. Kruger is described as six feet tall, around 175 pounds, wearing black shorts, a dark shirt, and high-top sneakers. He's considered armed and dangerous. If you have any information on where he might be, call Green Cove Springs Police. That phone number, 904-297-7305. In Jacksonville, police are investigating a shooting at a Northside motel that sent two people to the hospital. JSO says shots were fired just after 5.30 this morning at Knight's Inn on Hearts Road. That's just off of I-95 near Dunn Avenue. One person is in critical condition. The other has life-threatening injuries. Police say that the shooting happened just after a dispute in an apparent robbery. There's no word on what started that dispute, and it's unclear if police are still searching for any suspects. Investigators are looking at evidence and surveillance video. Well, many people are apologizing after the Ashley Madison information dump, but not state attorney Jeff Ashton. What he has to say about it after the break. Plus, Jimmy Carter returns to Georgia to teach Sunday school right after announcing he has cancer. What he says and his reaction from the congregation after the break. Comfort meets style. Introducing Flex by Joseph Abu.